It was when I basically hit creative rock bottom November 2018 that I said, you know, F it. I got to write the book that I want to write to serve the people that I want to serve. I'm going to write it in my own way. If I get an agent, great. I definitely do want, I definitely do want to be published, but that's no longer priority number one. So Black Buck was the third book. What's up, everybody? Mateo Escarapo here, author of Black Buck, hitting shelves across America January 5th. 2021 do not miss out for a good amount of my career especially in sales i was a top guy right i was a leader and i definitely saw things um related to race that um should have been called into question a little bit more and things that i could have done more but a lot of what's in the book and those tense moments i'm just translating from things i've experienced outside of the workplace <laughs> All right, a highlight of my year personally was my parents getting COVID and making it through. <laughs> you know, they got COVID. Yeah, I had COVID too, but like whatever, you know, uh, I thought I'd be okay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I am. But yeah, my parents, both of them had it and they were sick for a couple of weeks, but you know, they're all right. They're, they're back to 100%. So that's a personal highlight. Um, and it is tough because there has been so much tragedy in 2020 that it feels weird uh, to talk about highlights, but we still have to be able to celebrate all the time, right? That's a form of resistance. So for me, I mean, um, definitely going into Hollywood a little bit more, getting to know people in Hollywood, people that I've seen on TV. Like there are, there are people that have read the book and I, I watch these people for years and they're like, yo man, I like your book. I'm like, I like you on TV too, trying to keep it cool, you know? And, and there's, there's at least one of these people who I have a strong bond with now and I can go to and he helps me navigate this world of Hollywood so that I'm not just walking blindly into this crazy forest. Um, so those are definitely some highlights, but another big highlight, it's an intersection of, of the personal and professional. It's being able to read reviews from readers and see that this book really resonated with them and that they got what I was doing and that it illuminated dark spots for some of them, but also shone a light on things that they'd already, they'd already known and faced themselves. So yeah, those are, those are just a handful of uh, personal professional highlights. It's that I love being alone, but to a certain extent. Right, like I live alone, I love my alone time, I love being able to think, I love being able to just talk out loud to myself, dance around my apartment, do whatever I want. Um, but I do miss going out and seeing people in the evenings, right? Like after I've isolated myself for most of the day or multiple days, then being able to just go out freely and see people, being able to consume art outside is something that I knew I enjoyed but didn't know how critical it was to my sanity. And that's something that, you know, I look forward to, obviously, when people aren't dying anymore. Um, and uh, the last thing I'll say that I learned is that it's sort of easier to generate ideas in quarantine, at least for me. I mean, I'm stuck inside. I'm talking to people via the Internet and via the phone and, you know, having these these interviews. But um, being able to give myself the freedom to just go into my own head and know that I'm really not gonna have to give my energy to anyone else later in the day, at least physically, uh, has just helped me generate like a ton of ideas. I'm probably gonna do something I'm calling Seven Crazy Nights, which is where I'm gonna go to the movie theaters every day. <laughs> like once they, once they open back up and it's safe, I'm going to see a movie every single day. I don't care what's playing, I'm going every day, every day. Um, I think I'm just gonna walk in without even, you know, knowing and just, I'm just gonna stand there all day. I don't know her full name, forgive me, but the woman who absolutely crushed um, Queen's Gambit, Anya, she played that role to a T. Um, I know that she's already been in things, like I think it was called Emma, but she'll, I know she'll be in a lot more. Um, Amine, he's a big rapper that I love, but he's getting just bigger and bigger all the time. A ring light. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if I, I, I couldn't have imagined that I was ever gonna rock a ring light. I thought they were always for like, here's my makeup brand, here you go. But yeah, I bought a ring light and I, you only asked for one, but I got a radio too. I bought a radio. I listen to the radio all the time now. <laughs> 